So this is uh, once again an attempt to do an analysis of two of my faster laps at Shuzibullo. Uh except this time we've got some fancier tools uh, and overlays on our video. So instead of my just having to use the mouse and point out cones, we can sort of see things on the map. Um, we got this little percentage difference in the middle. Again, the data, it's all this one hertz GPS thing, so it's not perfect, which is why you see the stuff like this here. Clearly my line through that corner is not that different between the two laps. Um, so that's just the one hertz. So you see we got a GPS fix here and then another GPS fix here, and it just draws a straight line in between it. Uh, and so in the reality, the, this probably was a corner that looks like this, and that this one got the GPS there, so both these lines should look more like that. Whatever, we'll get a 10 hertz GPS. But anyway, um, the point of this video is to show that with the fancy tool, I think it's easier to do the analysis. So let's see if all that effort for the tool actually made any difference. So let's see. Uh, get started. So again, on the straight, uh, you see the difference is basically negligible between the two. The, uh, s the color on top here is the color that's ahead, and the color will flip back and forth depending on which one's ahead. So according to the GPS anyway, the uh, bottom lap is ever so slightly ahead by 0.08%. Uh, this percentage, by the way, is a percentage of the total lap. Uh, so this is uh, 8 hundredths of a percent of the lap ahead uh, is the uh, bottom lap over the top lap. And as we enter turn one, see mid corner, things are pretty identical. The percentage difference, again, is it's kind of high here because of the uh, funny nature of the one hertz GPS, which is demonstrated by the maps. But once we exit the corner right around here, you'll see the, uh, the difference is quite a bit smaller. And again, it looks like, according to the GPS anyway, the bottom is slightly ahead. And if we look at the video, those cones do look slightly bigger than those cones. Let's see if, as we get closer. So yeah, it's hard to tell, but assuming that the car's in the same position left and right on the track, that cone is probably a couple feet ahead of that cone. Maybe it's pretty close. So uh, off we go. Uh, as we go through the corner, there's nothing in it. I find it pretty funny, actually, through this next sequence of corners, <laughs> both laps get oversteer in pretty much exactly the same way. Um, it's almost like it's the same way. Right here. <laughs> That's correction from both. Um, and the visual markers are identical, basically, on the two laps, and uh, GPS fixes are identical. So at this point in the lap, I really don't think we've learned much about difference between the two. There, I don't think there's time that either one really can make up. Nothing appreciable, anyway. Um, I think what we'll find and we'll see soon is that the uh, the bowl is actually where a lot of time is made up between these laps. So again, entering the bowl, the, oops, pointing at the screen. So using the mouse, um, they're pretty similar. Again, looks like the bottom uh, lap is positioned slightly more to the right in the track, but again, not too much. See, so we turn in. The bottom is clearly ahead at this point. Um, it doesn't quite show it again because the GPS bits here. Mid corner, clearly the GPS is not good enough to show this. Um, but let's rewind a little bit and let's see. I think it looks like we actually gain a lot on the entry on the bottom lap. Uh, telemetry is not showing this. We're just looking at it visually, so uh, so much for that. But in we go. Yeah, I think we just enter significantly more aggressively in the bottom lap. And uh, as you can see, with the GPS points and the percentage, that pays off quite a bit. Uh, and so the bottom lap stays ahead all the way through, we use the mouse, all the way through here, um, up through the chicane and everything. But what's interesting is what you'll see is through this braking zone, they close up, and that's partially the accordion effect. Um, but also, as we exit the corner, uh, you'll notice they stay pretty close. So the top lap definitely had a better uh, run through that corner. Um, and you can sort of see in the speeds, the, the bottom lap is only one mile an hour ahead, which given how far ahead on the track is, you might expect more than that. So if we watch that corner one more time, it does look like the top lap is a little smoother. It's hard to tell too much, so maybe there's a tenth or two to be gained there. Uh, and all through this section, looks according to the map anyway, like the uh, top is gaining on the bottom. So more aggressive through the skid pad in the top lap. So that's another couple tenths probably for the, the bottom lap as well. We went from in this section down here to being four or five tenths of a percent down only two tenths of a percent. So that's definitely a couple tenths the bottom lap can make up. And as we cross the line, uh, two tenths or so of a percent between them and two tenths uh, of a lap time. So there's that. That's uh, a walkthrough with some fanciness. So overall, I'm pretty happy with this overlay. 
think it, a 10 hertz GPS would make it a lot better for the mid corner analysis, but definitely on the straights, you can see a result of the corner very clearly. Uh, and you can see just how close the, the two laps are through the first half of this lap. Um, it's all, most of the time is made up here, and then the top lap claws back some of that time through the, the last section, but uh, not enough. So there's a few tenths to be gained, at least just based on this analysis. And of course, there's always a bit more everywhere, as the saying goes. So thanks for watching.